This is Rick Rule for Rule Investment Media. Sponsors of the Boca Raton Natural Resources Investment Conference and sponsors of the ongoing series, the Boot Camp Series, uh, where we introduce our investors in deep dives to opportunities in the mining business. Today, I'm delighted to have, in anticipation of the Boca Raton Conference, a living legend, Craig Perry. For those of you who haven't attended past conferences, living legends are entrepreneurs who have been serially successful in mining, people who have created multi-billion dollar companies from scratch. Craig Perry uh, is very fortunate uh, to have caused this to occur with partners on several occasions. Craig, thank you for your past successes. Thank you too for your ongoing support of our conference. I'd like you to begin by giving us a brief biography uh, of how you came to be a living legend, your past successes and the people and the ideas that contributed to that success. Well, it's always a pleasure to, to, to chat with a true legend himself, uh, Rick Rule. So thank you very, very much for having us on. And I notice you're wearing your Battle Bank shirt there. Uh, what a wonderful story that is. Um, look, I, I'm a geologist by trade. I was very fortunate to be recruited to Rio Tinto Exploration in uh, the first part of my career. I was involved in a, the discovery of a, a wonderful microplatey high-grade hematite deposit in Western Australia there called Wealth Under the Luna, uh, and, then, uh, and then went on to have um, uh, a track record unblemished by success for several years. Uh, before discovering, going out on my own with Owen Hegarty in the Togas Realm Group, we discovered the Imam North coking coal in far eastern Russia, which is now doing and producing a million tonnes of high-grade coking coal a year. Uh, I, I put that project into development. Um, we then went on and started Next Gen Energy, Lee Courier, Chris McFadden and myself, and we discovered the giant Arrow deposit, which is one of the world's great deposits and certainly the best uranium deposit. Uh, and then we discovered the Hurricane deposit in a company I started called ISO Energy, which is one of my favourite discoveries. I think the highest grade uranium deposit discovered in the Athabasca to date. There's about 40, bill, uh, 40 million pounds there at about 50% U308. So that was a fun discovery. Uh, I then uh, became chairman of Skeena Resources. We discovered another four or five million ounces of gold at the uh, SK Creek deposit that past explorers had, uh, had uh, uh, passed over. And then uh, the most recent thing that I've been involved in that I'm really enjoying is our Vizsla Silvers discovery of the uh, Panuco Kapala Silver District there in Sinaloa in Mexico, which is an exciting story. So Craig, after these successes, uh, after EMR and Owen Haggerty, you move your family to Vancouver. Uh, you uh, make a couple spectacular uranium discoveries, and, and that moves us up to today, uh, Ascenta Capital, which I guess is a sort of a multi-company office with yourself and some associates. Describe what you're trying to accomplish with Ascenta and describe to the constituents of Ascenta the projects that you're working on today. Sure, sure. Sorry, it's Inventor Capital, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> We're having a few dramas here today. Okay. Um, so look at Inventor Capital, what we're doing, you know, we, of course, we're, like everyone else in our industry, recognise the importance of battery metals as a component to this electrification of the planet and the challenges we have there. So what we've tried to do is put our foot on as, as much battery metal as we possibly can. We've got a two-pronged approach, really. Buy as many quality projects as we can, as cheaply as we can. And of course, the, the awful nature of this market means that there's a lot of bargains out there at the moment. So we can buy pounds of copper, ounces of silver very cheaply. And then the other prong to that is, is probably our bread and butter, and that is exploring and hopefully making discoveries. Of course, you know, it's never guaranteed, but we've been very fortunate on that front in recent times with Vizsla Silver. Uh, we discovered the Panuco uh, district in Mexico now turning out to be one of the world's great silver districts. I think we've now got a resource there of 325 million high-grade ounces of silver. And I think that's going over time to, you, you know, we're going to see uh, a, a district that delivers over a billion ounces of resources there. So uh, we're ecstatic with that. We've got Vizsla Copper, where we're putting our foot on as much of, uh, of the copper in the soil here in British Columbia. Uh, we've got a number of fantastic projects there and we think that British Columbia has an opportunity to become the next great hub of copper mining. Uh, and then apart from that, you know, given given my track record in uranium, uh, it would be foolish not for uh, not to be doing something there. So we have COSA 
resources with my old team from some of the next gen guys and Daiso Energy team, uh, and we're exploring um, you know un untapped, unexplored parts of the Athabasca Basin, uh, and so we're there in uh, in 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 the Athabasca where we've had success before. Uh, and I think we're, uh, you know, a chance of making a serious discovery. And of course, uranium so very, very important uh, to a zero carbon economy. I think it's important at this point in the discussion to disclose conflicts of interest. I'm a reasonable size uh, Visla Silver shareholder, and we'll be listening with interest to your presentations at the Boca Raton conference concerning uh, Visla Copper. And of course, I'm all ears given your prior success with NextGen and ISO uh, and the contribution the, that the Athabasca Basin has made to my own personal fortune uh, to hear about the, the work that you're doing there. Uh, let's, let's begin uh, with the Silver Project. How did you find the Silver Project? How did that come to you? How did you take it what, from what was at that point in time, I suspect a 25 million ounce resource to a 300 million ounce resource. Uh, we, we shouldn't gloss over a success like that. So perhaps y you could talk to us about the investment proposition, but more importantly, from an educational point of view, uh, how you located the project and how you grew the project. Yeah, look, that, this is a really interesting one. You know, they, they say, you know, often discovery is a, uh, making a discovery is a question of perseverance and, and staying with something for a long time. Here, a little bit different, you know, um, I, I think you've heard me talk about it before. One of the things that I learned at Rio Tinto is how to rank and prioritise exploration projects. Um, you, you know, you need the size of the prize. It's got to, you know, the prize has got to be big enough to justify the investment into the exploration process on a project. So you want to be exploring in terrains, parts of the world, parts of the Earth's crust, that have delivered large scale deposits or have the potential to deliver large scale deposits and tick that size of the prize box. Certainly, if you're gonna look for silver, you may as well be in Mexico, in the Sierra Madre, because that's where the world's big silver deposits are. So that, that was a big tick for us. Um, cost of the test, a very important thing. You don't wanna blow your brains out uh, spending too much money on exploration. You want to have good access to a project, hopefully not fly helicopters around and not drill deep holes to the moho. It's too expensive to do it and it's not a good use of your investors' dollars. So you want to be in a place where uh, you can uh, make discoveries, drill out resources relatively cheaply. And again, that project ticked that box. Uh, and then um, chance of success, uh, you know, this talks about endowment. If you're going to explore for uranium deposits or world-class uranium deposits, you're probably better off doing it where deposits have been found before. And so the Athabasca ticks that box. Um, you know, that's where the world's great high-grade uranium deposits are. Again, Mexico, if, if, if you've got veins of silver outcropping, um, you know, you know your chance of success is very high, and that's what we saw when we went to Panuco. The discovery story is a little bit of an interesting one, though. Um, you know, I was sitting there, my partner and I, uh, we had a submittal, and that's something that it's worth sort of noting that, you know, we see a hell of a lot of submittals from people, or, you know, we do our own project generation work as well, but we see a lot of things come across our desk. And I think our group of companies, we probably review over 500 projects a year at that desktop stage. I was sitting there on a sort of boring Wednesday afternoon back in 2018, uh, and, and noticed a, a slide deck on my desk that talked about the Panuco Kapala uh, project. I, it caught my interest because I couldn't believe what I'd seen. There seemed to be veins everywhere across a large area uh, and very little modern exploration. So uh, Mike and I jumped in a plane two days later, and that's the other thing. You, you've got to move pretty quickly when you see an opportunity of this nature. We, we jumped on a plane, flew down to Sinaloa in Mexico, a little bit trepidatious going to Sinaloa, but what we found is that Mazatlan is one of the original snowbird towns teeming with Canadians, grey-haired Canadians. So we got a good sense for the place, and the project that we, we, we visited Panuco was only an hour outside of that wonderful resort town of Mazatlan. Uh, and what I saw there was astonishing. Mike and I spent a couple of days driving through and around the hills there. 
uh, we noticed firstly that uh, you, you know there's a hell of a lot of mining had gone on but it was all fairly superficial stuff but they the area had been produced producing silver for over 400 years uh, and it provided a lot of metal back to Spain in that 400 years um, but what is the astonishing thing about it and I liken it to Hemlo you know I know the guys that discovered Hemlo just on the Trans-Canadian Highway used to joke that, well, you know, other explorers thought that if you were going to find a world-class gold deposit, you had to go into the far reaches of the country. You're never going to find something that close to a highway. Well, this project sits on two major highways, including the freeway between Mazatlan and Durango. There must have been thousands, if not tens of thousands, of geologists drive over that project, but it seemed that no one had bothered to get out and chip a rock despite all of this alteration that we saw there. So we did that. We went underground, took a few risks, and what we saw was was nothing short of astonishing. I, I you know, it was such a layup to get in there and start drilling holes. It was an expensive deal. We had to raise $50 million, but we thought, um, you know, it's an option deal. If it doesn't deliver for us, we can drop the project. Well, that's, you know, that's history now. We quickly raised the $50 million, bought the project out, and it's proving to, um, you know, I think it's exceeded all expectations so far. That Kapala vein, it sits right next to the small village of Kapala, another great mining centre, but it's a virgin discovery. It didn't, didn't outcrop. Uh, we've drilled out nearly 3 million ounces of gold equivalent there uh, in the past 18 months. So, and I think there's a lot more to come out of it, Rick. There's going to be some, um, you know, further major discoveries in that district, and it's fast proving to be a a full district with a huge number of veins and um, so it's a you know of all the discoveries I've been involved with with there have been a few um, this is probably my favorite and most interesting uh, just because of the scale of the opportunity uh, Craig we talked last year about the process of adding value uh, in the exploration development phase as being answering a series of unanswered questions uh, you increase the market's certainty with regards to the outcome, and the consequence of that is that you necessarily increase the project's value and hopefully the share price. So tell me uh, in the next 12 to 18 months what the unanswered questions are here. What's the exploration thesis? How do you propose to test it? What will be, if you will, the sort of investment proposal you're making to shareholders at the Natural Resources Investment Symposium? You bet. My, my, my favourite unanswered question at the moment is why is the market not responding, uh, you know, as it should to these very strong metal prices we're seeing? And, that, and that's a frustration, you know, because I think um, when we made the initial discovery, we we're trading at about a dollar eighty a share off the back of that discovery. We're back where we are, and we've drilled out three hundred twenty-five million ounces of silver, and largely de-risked the project. So, um, you know, the market dynamics are a little bit frustrating at the moment. But there's the opportunity. I've never seen a better market to be buying at the moment. I've been deploying a lot of capital myself, and mates like Peter Brown, and I'm, uh, I'm sure you have too, have been investing heavily at this best. You know, I've never seen a, a better opportunity to invest in the resource sector, bargains abound. Um, the unanswered questions for us on the project now, we look, we, you know, we'll continue to make um, uh, exploration uh, success there. I think, you know, we, we've, we've put out probably six dis new vein discoveries over the past two years. Uh, the team are very excited about what they're seeing out on the northeastern part of the project, which we've only just got to. You know, we've only just mapped that area and they've found some really interesting looking thick high grade veins out there in the eastern part of the property. Um, so we're excited for that. We'll continue to do good exploration work there. Uh, Jesus Velador, who's one of the world's most, uh, and certainly Mexico's most experienced geologist is leading the team. So we're excited for that. Uh, we do have, you know, the next step for the project now. Now, though, is uh, and, and certainly the project, I think, is the biggest sort of independently owned silver project, high-grade silver project in the world at 325 million ounces at just shy of 500 uh, grams per tonne silver equivalent. Um, the next steps for us is really to look to bring that into production and further de-risk the project. The team's done a great job of putting in place our AHEDO agreements, so we've got all of the agreements in, in place that we need to develop the project. 
now it's permitting, um, and look out for a, a, a preliminary economic assessment study uh, midway through the year. And I think that uh, you know people will be astonished with what they see there. The economics of a project like this, with grades like that, are just fabulous. Um, so that's the next step for us. And then on into permitting, I think we'll actually Rick, uh, do something that's a little bit un unusual for the resource sector, and probably look to skip that pre-feasibility study stage because we know this is going to be a wildly economic project move straight into the feasibility study stage and on into development as quickly as we can and start building one of the world's great and largest silver mines so as i understand it what we can look forward to is a preliminary economic assessment which really sort of defines definitively or semi-definitively the size of the prize uh that will include i take it uh, some sort of certified resource statement so that we'll get a third party assessment of the reserve and resource? Yeah, a hundred, hundred percent. And, uh, you, you know, we've been very fortunate. We, uh, Simon Smerlek, who's been on the board since day one of, of Visa Silver, uh, he's the chief operating officer at present of Osenko Engineering. He's been involved in and built some of the world's great mining projects, including the biggest mine development, mill development at Goro uh, there in, uh, in uh, Polynesia. Um, Simon's built uh, or led teams to build over 50 mines. So this is a project that I won't say that he can build in his sleep, but he certainly, it, it's not going to be a major challenge for him. So we've now ticked that box. We've got a proven mine builder on the team. He's fast building up his team. So lots of good news on that uh, development front, you know, the metallurgical work we've got to do, of course. Um, and I, I think at some point this year, we're probably going to do some uh, underground development work for test mining as well, so that will uh, will give us a leg up to when it comes to developing the full mine, full mine uh, further down the road. So, ladies and gentlemen, in, in anticipation of the Boca Raton Natural Resources Investment Conference, and in anticipation of the fact that you only have four days, 12 hours a day, to learn as much as you can about the conference, I want you involved ahead of time. We've introduced you today to Craig Perry, uh, uh, who has earned uh, and deserves a, a living legend uh, award given his past successes in mining, who has three uh, important opportunities to present to you in Boca Raton. A silver opportunity, which full disclosure, uh, I'm a shareholder of, a uranium opportunity and a copper opportunity. When the one-on-one -on -one feature goes live, uh, it's important to the extent that this is of interest to you that you learn more uh, by corresponding with the Inventa Capital uh, spokespeople. Craig, uh, if people want to learn more outside the channel, what are the contacts, the company's contacts? How do they reach you and who is it that they should reach? Yeah, Rick, thank you. That Certainly that one-on-one that -on -one feature for the conference is a great way and we'll be there in platoon strength at your wonderful conference down there. It's always so well attended. The other way, um, best best way to, to, to get to us is through our website, Inventor Capital, I-N-V-E-N-T-A capital.ca. Uh, and, uh, and, and we can direct you to each of the CEOs of those fantastic three companies that we'll be talking about. Greg, thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. Thank you too for your ongoing support of the conference and the other investment education activities of rural investment media. It'll be a delight to see you in Boca Raton. Always a pleasure and thanks very much, Rick.